as lovers of the Ahlul Bayt, we all have an inclination to the epitome of love. When we rejoice, when times are hard, whatever stage of life we are in, we all yearn to be in one special place. We all wish to visit the Blessed Shrine of Imam Al Hussein in the holy city of Karbala. Not all of us have the blessing to visit the shrine of Imam Hussein, but there is still a way to experience the sights and sound of the blessed land of Karbala in the comfort of your own homes. We call upon you, dear viewers, to support us in our financial costs to help bring the Holy Land of Karbala beaming into your homes. You can support us with a monthly donation of just 50 US dollars or 30 pounds. We are your gateway to Karbala. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Imam Hussein TV3. Rahim, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. In today's hadith of the day, I'm going to share with you a saying from my beloved Prophet Muhammad, may peace and blessings be upon him and his family, which is recorded in Biharul Anwar. The Holy Prophet advised, when making a decision to do something, think about its outcome. If it's good for you and for your advancement and development, then follow it. But if it is misleading, leave it out. Life is full of many ups and downs and many important decisions which must be made, many of which can be scary at times and make us uncertain. Here, the Prophet Muhammad, may peace and blessings be upon him, is giving us a very simple advice to reflect on each decision we make and not to make decisions with haste. Much like many motivational speakers tell us today, the Prophet told us 1400 years ago that we should do things that help us advance in life and develop our character. And he tells us, if the decision will lead to detriment, not to do it. It may sound like simple advice, but in these hectic lives that we live in, it is a reminder to pause and reflect on decisions we make, however big and however small. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome to Ahkam SOS, the show that discusses the Islamic duties and the practices. Uh, this is a live show, we're taking all your questions. If you are watching on Facebook Live or you're watching on uh, YouTube, you can send in your questions in the comment section. If you're watching on Sky or on any other satellite network, you can send in your questions via the WhatsApp number. It should be on the bottom there and it should be like a QR code there somewhere which you can scan and take it straight to the WhatsApp page. You can call us on the WhatsApp uh, number if you'd like. Uh, otherwise, you can call us live in the studio 0203 515 And inshallah, myself and the Sheikh will be able to answer your questions. I'm your host, Mohsin Shah, and joining me is Sheikh Ali Ma. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikhna. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. How are you this evening, Sheikh? Alhamdulillah. MashaAllah. Sheikhna, before we begin, we would like to congratulate the Ummah and also the Imam of our time of the coming of a great, great sacred month, which is Rajab. Now, Sheikhna, my first question is, the sacred month of Rajab is at the doorstep. What are the amal and worship acts that are mentioned in the Book of Duas and supplications? أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على محمد وآله الطاهرين ولعنة الله على عدائهم أجمعين 
indeed it's a great month and a sacred month and the start of the months of uh, the ad'iyah and supplications and repentance and it is a preparation for the forthcoming month of Ramadan uh, that one starts to prepare himself and herself uh, to let's say let's say practice fasting mm -hmm. and doing mustahab fast and prayers and ad'iyah so by the time of the first day of the month of Ramadan the one is ready to enter this holy month and begin 30 days or 29 days of uh, fasting now as you mentioned some of the uh, a'mal or uh, ad'iyah in which uh, or the fada'il of this great month the month of Rajab uh, from Mafatih al-Jinan, one can go back and, and see uh, what are the a'mal, but in, just briefly, uh, there's a narration by Imam Musa ibn Ja'far alayhi salam. He says, man sama yawman min rajab, the one who fasts one day of rajab, taba'adat anhu nar masirat sana. Uh, the hellfire would, would, would be distanced from this individual who fasts just one day of rajab, one year, distance of wow. one year. Uh, of course, we don't we know exactly is it from the years of dunya or akhirah, and how, how, how far would be this distance. Uh, so for the one who fasts one day of the Mount of Rajab. Another hadith by, again, uh, the Imam alayhi salam, Rajab nahrun fil jannah. Rajab is a river in paradise. So one of the meanings of Rajab is uh, given name to a, mm -hmm. a river in paradise. أشد بياضا من اللبن. It's whiter than uh, milk. وأحلى من العسل. And sweeter than honey. من صام يوما من رجب سقاه الله عز وجل من ذلك النهر. The one who fasts one day of this holy month of sacred month of Rajab, um, he would be given uh, from that river you know the the river of paradise uh, in which uh, sweeter than honey and whiter than milk another hadith by imam ja'far al-sadiq alayhi salam he says qala qala rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so he narrates from his grandfather rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that the prophet said rajab shahr al-istighfar this month is the month of istighfar in other in other words, it is the month of purification of oneself. Mm -hmm. So first you start to purify yourself in this month, and then you have the Shah Sha'ban again, until the, the month of Ramadan, so the one enters this holy month with purif purified soul and mind and heart. Rajab shahrul istighfar li ummati, for my nation. فَأَكْثُرُوا فِيهِ الْإِسْتِغْفَارِ And say istighfar as much as you can, and repent to Allah Azza wa Jal in this uh, holy and, and sacred month. فَاسْتَكْثُرُوا مِنْ قَوْلِ أَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ رَبِّي وَأَتُوبُ عَلَيْهِ And say in this way, أَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ رَبِّي وَأَتُوبُ عَلَيْهِ As much as you can, 100 times, 1,000 times, mm -hmm. less or more, it's up to you. And of course there are ad'iyah in which recited uh, every day, short ad'iyah which begins with اللَّهُمَّ إِنْ يَسَلْكَ صَبْرُ الشَّاكِرِينَ لَكْ And another dua, يَا مِنْ أَرْجُهُ لِكُلِّ خَيْرِ Again, this dua is uh, recited after each salah, uh, wajib salah. So when you finish the salah and tasbih to Zahra alayhi salam, you would say, Ya man arjuhu li kulli khair, wa amna sakhatuhu min kulli shar, to the end of the dua. Um, again, an nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, a prophetic hadith, that man qala fi rajab, the one who says in the month of rajab, astaghfiru allaha alladhi la ilaha illahu wahdahu la sharika lah, wa atubu alayhi, to say this istighfar in this way, mi'at marra, hundred times a day, wa khatamaha bil sadaqah, and he would end this dhikr uh, hundred times and then he pays sadaqah. Khatamallahu lahu bar rahma wal maghfirah. Allah would end for him an ending with mercy and wow. forgiveness. That's what we need mm -hmm. as believing individuals Mashallah. to end our life and to end this a'mal with mercy and forgiveness. Mashallah. Um, last uh, hadith in this uh, session. عن النبي صلى الله عليه وآله. Again, a prophetic hadith that he said, من قال في رجب, the one who says in this month of رجب, لا إله إلا الله ألف مرة, he says لا إله إلا الله ذكر الله عز وجل, one thousand times, كتب الله له مئة ألف حسنة. Allah would write for him hundred thousand of حسنة and deeds, good deeds. 
وبنى الله له مئات مدينة في الجنة and Allah would build for him hundred cities in paradise and of course because we're going to live there inshallah eternally yes. in paradise <laughs> so we need this vast amount of Property, uh, property and uh, <laughs> deeds and, and uh, exactly. credits and so forth. Well, apparently it, it turns into currency on, on that side, all our deeds and, and, and stuff like that. And then that's what we have to live off for the rest of our existence. Inshallah. On, on and of course, the amal of the first day of Rajab, we have uh, Siyam, the first day of mm -hmm. Rajab, um, Ghusl, okay. tomorrow, inshallah, first day of Rajab, and Zirat Imam Hussein, alayhi salam, the one to inshallah. visit Imam. Ah. And the hadith from Imam As-Sadiq He said Man zar al-Husayn ibn Ali alayhi salam Awwal yawm al-Rajab Ghafar Allah lahu al-Battah The one who visits Imam al-Husayn alayhi salam On the first day of Rajab Allah would indeed Certainly uh, Forgive his sins So uh, Let's try to Inshallah Do as much as we can uh, For this holy And, and sacred month Inshallah Also Shaykhna Rajab has many, many um, special occasions and you know, one which is very, very close is the birth of Imam Bakr alayhi salam. Um, so, you know, to the Muslim Ummah and to the Imam of our time, we also extend our congratulations on this auspicious occasion. Shaykhna, please, Imam Muhammad Bakr alayhi salam, who was one who survived Karbala as well, witnessed it, and probably saw a lot of change in government and maybe had an opportunity to help you know teach hadith and quran have less um opponents and less uh, you know like um obstacles in his way to promote the shia faith and so forth shaykhna the first of rajab is the birthday of the fifth imam of the ahlul bayt uh, imam hamad bakr peace be upon him what can be said about his great personality yes indeed sadallah ya makum ya allah azza wa jal give us the opportunity and the tawfiq to visit the imam Insha'Allah in the holy city of Medina, yes. in the Baqi' graveyard, Insha'Allah, uh, Insha'Allah, Mu'mineen would, Insha'Allah, come and try to rebuild mm -hmm. this uh, demolished and destroyed graves of Ahl Bayt, alayhi wa We have to work very hard uh, uh, by all means and tools and media to uh, uh, to push for the building. Of the of these sacred graves of Ahl Bayt, and it's it's bad, you know, it's shameful to see their graves, you know, with no even small, you know, uh, shrine or something to symbolize and, and, and shows uh, that there are graves of Ahl Bayt, as it were, over 100 years ago. So we have to, inshallah, push for this issue that to build the qubur of Ahmad al Baqi, inshallah, soon, inshallah. Um, narration by Aban ibn Taghlib, one of the mm -hmm loyal and uh, important narrators of Imam al-Baqar and Ashab and Imam al-Sadiq uh, um, Aban he said and Abi Abdullah al-Sadiq he says that in Jabir ibn Abdullah al-Ansari Jabir al-Ansari he lived a long life and he met the Holy Prophet and the uh, Ashab al Kisa and all the way to Imam al uh, Sajjad alayhi salam mm -hmm. and to Imam al Baqar alayhi salam. Allah gave him you know, a prolonged pro pro life, you know, tawfiq, to, to live this uh, you know, years of life to meet the Ahl Bayt alayhi salam. So the Imam says that Jabir wa kana akhir man baqiya min Ashab Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was the last individual to stay. Uh, uh, after the demise of the Prophet so the last of the Ashab because after the Ashab are the Tabi'een those who saw the Ashab and met the Ashab and not the Rasulullah himself mm. so he was the last of the Ashab who lived uh, till that time in which he went and visited Imam Hussain the Arba'een the famous narration of Jabir with Atiyah visiting on the day of Arba'een uh, uh, the grave of Al Hussein Ali in Karbala, just after 40 days of his martyrdom. So um, the Imam says that وكان رجلا منقطعا إلينا أهل البيت, and he was uh, someone who attached to us Ahl Bayt عليه السلام. قال فبينما جابر يتردد ذات يوم في بعض طرق المدينة. Jabir was on his way uh, walking uh, in the alleyways of the Medina. He met Imam. Al-Baqir alayhi salam 
who was in his you know, childhood age. Uh, so he saw the Imam al Baq alayhi salam and he said to him, uh, Adbir, uh, go back. فأدبر, the, the Imam went back. He looks like Rasulullah. That's how they describe him. Then Jabr said, Walladhi nafsi biyadih. I swear by Allah Azza wa Jal, who owns my soul. Uh, because he actually saw the prophets and saw Imam Baqir. So ah, he said he looks like so the Imam. Witness. Yes, okay, so he's yes. both. He saw so both. The exactly. Then he said, Ya Ghulam Masmuk. What is your name? Qal ismi Muhammad ibn Ali ibn Hussein alayhim as salam jami'an. Faja'ala yuqabla ra'asah. So he starts to kiss the head of Imam al Baqir alayhim as salam. Wa yaqul, Ba'abi anta wa ummi. My parents be your sacrifice. Abuka Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa alayhi wa alayhi wa Your father Rasulullah uh, sends his salam to you. Yes. Because the Prophet mm -hmm. said to Jabir, if you see yeah. my son uh, Al-Baqir alayhi wa yeah. then send, my convey son. my salam to him. He gave an indication of how long he was going to live for. Exactly. Qala faraj'a Muhammad ibn Ali ila abih wa huwa dha'run fa akhbaruhu al-khabar. Then he went to his father, al-sajjad alayhi wa salam. He told his father that I saw Jabir. So the Imam told him that, Ya Bunay qad fa'alaha Jabir. Indeed, Jabir has conveyed the salam of mm -hmm. your father, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then the Imam told him, Ilzim baytaka, Ya Bunay. Stay at home, don't go out. Because of the Bani Umayyaz, mm -hmm. uh, they were looking and, and uh, uh, spying on the yeah. houses of, of Bani yeah. Hashim, just to make sure that if there is an Imam who will become a, after yes. this Imam, mm -hmm. then they would kill or basically yeah. detain and, yeah. and yes. prison the Imam. Sheikh, now we've got a lot of questions coming. Just a quick reminder to all of you is if you have a question you like to send in, please send it via the WhatsApp there on the bottom. There's a QR code over there. You can scan uh, and it will take you straight to the WhatsApp page. If not, if you're watching on Facebook Live or you're watching on YouTube, put your questions in the comment section. Inshallah, the technical team will send it on my iPad. And I've got some here. I think these are from YouTube. Um, Assalamu alaikum, Sheikhna. Uh, you know how when we recite Imam Ali alayhi salam in the Adhan, did Imam Ali recite his name in the Adhan? If not, then why do we recite his name? Ashadu anna Ali waliula in the Adhan. Was this recited? Would if Imam Ali alayhi salam was to recite it in the Adhan, would he recite it? And if he did not, okay, why do we recite it? I don't have information about this particular part of the uh, if there's a narration with this regard or been said, but anyhow, this Shahada Thalitha was mentioned on Dev Ghadir, mm -hmm. either by Salman or, or, or Abu Dhar. I think it was Hadud Bilal. Or Bilal, Bilal yeah. One of them recited it recited in the Adhan on yes. Dev Ghadir when the Holy Prophet officially appointed Ali as his vice general Khalifa mm -hmm. after him. So it was mentioned there uh, in the Adhan. Of course, some companions complained to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa that uh, how come that Bilal or other person mm -hmm. mentioned Imam Ali in the Adhan? Why is the change? Why is exactly. the change there? Or why is the So, exactly. That? So, um, that was in the presence of the Prophet and the Qawl or the Taqreer Imam or the Nabi Hujjah. So one of the ways in which we would approve uh, the saying of the Prophet is the saying or Taqreer means to, to affirm or confirm mm -hmm. an act of somebody that becomes as a Hujjah or, or a Sunnah as mm -hmm. a result. I think also a tacit approval if he doesn't say anything exactly. it's an approval because it is wajib upon the Hujjah to um, you know, um, correct an error. And if they stay silent, that means it is okay, uh, mm -hmm. and so forth. Uh, another one here, Sheikhna. Um, what does the Sharia say about organ donation and blood donation? In overall, uh, uh, donations in which, for example, to do with kidney, for example, if somebody is in need of it, one can do so. Uh, if, if, let's say, somebody is in need of it, then they can do so. The issue is about the uh, external organs that can somebody give his eyes, for example. That is what in which they, they have discussion and many would not agree that for somebody to give his external the same mm -hmm. organs to somebody else. From YouTube, is it permissible to separate Salah like the Sunnah? So um, to pray Dhuhr and then have a bit of a gap, a couple of hours later pray Asr, pray Maghrib early and have a bit, bit of a gap and pray Isha. And you were talking like Praying five prayers at five separate times. The thing is, you have to fill this gap with taqibat and a'mal. Hmm. So you have to sit in your, in your prayer mat, 
and with amal and, and taqibat until it reaches the time of the asr, then you pray asr. I see. But the better, of course, the better the ulama mentions is to uh, join the both prayers. Uh, interesting question, Sheikh. If a married woman commits adultery with a man, they become permanently forbidden for each other. Okay. What is considered adultery here? Is it only limited to actual intercourse? Or is there any other things that are classified as adultery? Adultery is the penetration, basically. Okay. That's what zina means, basically, mm -hmm. is to penetrate. Other acts of, let's say, touching and so forth, that's not zina. The zina is to commit the actual act. That's okay. why we have uh, the ahkam of the, the one who, na'udhu billah, commits zina. Mm -hmm. If there are four witnesses, for example, witness this, this thing and then... Mm -hmm. And so for the ahkam would be applied for the one who actually penetrates. Assalamu alaikum. I think this is from WhatsApp. Uh, when praying with your husband at home and you are only two, should the man stand in front of the wife or on the same line? So this is the husband and wife, they want to pray in jama'ah. Uh, should, oh, I'm not sure, it doesn't even say if it's jama'ah or not, it says it's praying at home. Uh, should the husband be uh, slightly ahead, quite far ahead, or can they pray next to each other? How should it work between husband and wife? Of course, to be ahead of the wife, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, next question from one of our viewers. Okay, bit of a long one here. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. The traditional learning of recitation of Quran used to have brutal punishment. Students, may, may of whom were young children, beaten with sticks if they made a mistake. Is it true that if you beat a child and leave a mark, one has to pay a kafara? Why is education a burden rather than enjoyment? Why were students learning to become hafiz tied to a pole? Did the Prophet encourage disciplining of children by beating? Okay, so the question is in regard to teaching Quran. Unfortunately, and a lot of madars, uh, madrasas, um, you know, it, it, they were very strict um, and you know, you'd get disciplined. If you made a mistake as well, they'd, uh, they'd you know, give you, uh, um, you know, I'll be honest, I, I got hit at my madrasa with a, with a stick and so forth. Uh, and um, is this the correct way to encourage children to recite Quran, focus and learn and refrain from making mistakes? Or are there better methods? Or what is the method of the Ahlul Bayt to teach young children Quran? I mean, the Quran mentions the Prophet The Prophet's message and the Prophet himself was a rahmah to the people. If he forgave the mushrikeen, those who killed his uncles, who killed, uh, you know, those who were close to the Prophet then, uh, and he did not punish them, he would come and punish kids who came to learn the prophetic mm -hmm. Hadith and the, the, the prophetic, prophetic sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, revelation of the Qur'an. Um, I haven't seen anything in the history of Ahlul Bayt or the pro mm. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that they would hit somebody uh, um, who came to learn the words of Allah azza wa jal, to learn akhlaq of Ahlul Bayt, to learn the akhlaq of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who wa was one of his akhlaq when he walks, let's say in the alleyways in the street, he would say salam to the children. You know, salam alaikum. He would look at the mm -hmm. kids and, and say salam with a smile. I don't know where this came from. Is it the culture of the Middle East or the back? The Possibly. East, I mean, um, to, to hit children yeah. and then to leave a mark, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. the, the, the black or the blue or the red has a, has a deer. You have to pay a certain okay. amount of deer mm -hmm. for each color. That's another issue, Shari issue. So. I think the way it's done is, is uh, in somehow it's in overall it's, it's wrong, but uh, there are of course in terms of to punish the the, the child who disobeys or is arrogant or, or for example causing nuisance and so forth. There is, but you, you're not allowed to hit in this way and, and to leave black and red on on the child's body, for example. There's a limit to this issue if there is a need of smacking or beating. If there is, otherwise, you have to use the best means of akhlaq. And we can see the example in the uh, Western school, for example, mm -hmm. how they encourage the kids through games, play, through, Rewards, let's say, dolls and so forth. You know, stickers, exactly. medals, certificates. You have to attract the child, not, not mm -hmm. to basically make him to run away from the madrasa or the katab, as they used to call it in Iraq, mm -hmm. katab. You have to attract him towards these schools.
So I think the way it was done, uh, or is still done, I think it's wrong. Fair enough. Uh, from YouTube, is it obligatory to do such as so after getting confused during the prayer? Can I just repeat the prayer from the beginning? The sujda sahu is for any uh, addition to the salah or subtraction from the salah. So if somebody, for example, um, adds a taslim or tashahud in the first rak'ah, for example, this addition of something that is not in, in the right place, that you do tashahud in the first rak'ah, that will basically make the one to uh, perform uh, sujda sahu after he finished the salah or she finished the salah. To, to sajda uh, with the knee of uh, sahu and that's it. I mean, uh, you, could, you don't have to repeat your salah if this wasn't intentionally mm -hmm. done. Unintentionally, the one did tashahud in the first rak'ah, for example. Sticking to salah, Sheikh, now one of the viewers has asked, I used to unknowingly pray my prayers uh, the Sunni way. When I was younger, as I went to a Sunni mosque, uh, my mother didn't correct me. And when I got older, I started praying the Shia way. Do I redo these? So. Uh, young girl, and unfortunately this is uh, uh, very common in the Shia community because the parents are not religious they will, and they want their children to be religious and learn Islam so they'll send them to the local mosque but sometimes it's not a Shia mosque at all so they'll send them to uh, another madhab and they will learn the fiqh and the ahkam and the salah of a different madhab now this person who comes from a Shia household learn how to pray uh, the, the Sunni way um, and prayed like that until they, uh, you know, were corrected or until they discovered the, the Shia Madhab and how to pray in that manner. So the prayers that were prayed before, does this sister have to make up for those or is there a pardon? How does it work? If she was a Sunni before and then she converted to Shia, there's no need to repeat the Salah. Mm -hmm. Uh, because the hadith says, uh, uh, or they mentioned, uh, Islam yajubu ma qabla. So whatever they did in their own religion or faith, they don't have to repeat it when they convert mm -hmm. to the Shia of Al Bayt alayhum as -salam. But if they, are sh if they were Shia and they prayed in the Sunni way, of course the Salah is batil. Uh, as soon as you put your hands on your uh, belly, uh, no. you, know, you fold your hands, or you say Amin, the Salah is batil. Mm. I think Sayyid Sistani has a clear fatwa on that. That's, that's, the, that's, the that's, the yeah, that's the issue. That's the issue. That's the issue. From WhatsApp, Salaamu Alaikum. We sisters read and research the tafsir of the Holy Quran. I usually listen to uh, a Sheikh uh, and read from Alama Tabatabai's commentary, translation, uh, and so forth. Uh, then we discuss, uh, but then we discuss, but people tell us that it is wrong as you have to do this with ulama and not yourself. Is this true? Can we not read and learn? Okay, so they read a tafsir from different mufassirun and then they sit and discuss and so forth. But there's no tafsir teacher or expert there. So are they allowed to read, interpret the tafsir in their own way and discuss with others that read the tafsir? Or should they actually go to a qualified teacher or someone who's an expert in this field and learn from them? Of course, if, if one can find a teacher and learn from them, that would, of course, a credit, uh, of course, that's their priority. But if not, then they have to try find, to find a simple tafsir. Uh, maybe a tafsir, with, uh, let's say, that gives, in each line of the verse, there's a hadith from Ahl al like tafsir al-Safi, tafsir al-Burhan, I think. These tafsir have narrations of Ahl al-Bayt, uh, that gives, maybe tafsir al-Amthal, uh, also, uh, or in Farsi, Namuna has some kind of um, given details. Of course, we can't we can't say everything is correct mm -hmm. in these tafasir. One should be very careful with some opinions. So, sometimes they bring opinions of, of non-Shia. You know, yes. We have to be careful. I've seen so that. you have I've to be very that. careful mm -hmm. when you pick and read and try to come up with a conclusion for the meaning of this ayah, for example. Very careful with it. Yeah. I sent some uh, More questions coming in. Can we do ziyarah of the holy shrines and umrah on behalf of our parents, one of whom is alive and the other deceased? What is the method of doing the niyyah? Uh, what has been given is the niyyah uh, on behalf of that individual. They do the, let's say, uh, the hajj or the umrah. And uh, we've seen this many times in the hajj. Some people come for the hajj or even umrah or niyyah, for example, 
on behalf of some, someone. Yeah. Fair enough. Um, Assalamu alaikum, Sheikhna. What is your comment about Imam Jafar Sadiq alayhi advice for mothers that they should put their newborn babies to sleep on their left side? Sheikhna, have you heard of this? Have you heard Imam Sadiq talking about babies on their left side? Yes, one of the lecturers, um, he mentioned this in, in his lecture in Muharram about 20 something years ago, uh, that uh, the recent research by the scientists they found out if, if you put the, the baby on your left side, you know, for the mothers, uh, because of the heart, ah. the heartbeat. So the child, when he was in his mother's womb, he, he used to be calm because mm. of the attaching himself to the heart yeah. of the mother. He would hear the beats of the heart. Mm. So when you put the child towards the left side, he would actually be calm and uh, would basically feel peaceful, peacefulness mm. uh, uh, because of uh, the beatings of his mother's heart. Uh, from WhatsApp, Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. No. Please, if after buying a product, I find that the product contains haram ingredients, should I throw it away? If it's the like of alcohol and uh, pork, pork in ingredients, of course, you, you cannot give it to anybody, mm -hmm. even non Muslims. Throw it away. You have to throw it, yeah, exactly. Uh, or otherwise, give it to animals, maybe, to the animals. Otherwise, uh, if, it's so, I don't know, if it's like chicken or. Chicken beef, and beef, which is yeah, no, halal. Not halal. You can give it to the non Muslims. You can give it to okay. Make, can, have can, this consume it. Thing. From YouTube, Assalamu alaikum, Sheikhna. I've heard you can do Mustahab fast if you have Qadha. Uh, what, is, what if you cannot remember your Qadha fast? Does that mean you cannot ever do Mustahab fast due to not knowing? Okay, if you have Qadha fasts, are you allowed to do Mustahab fasts? And if you do not know, how many qadha fasts do you have? Does that mean you cannot ever perform your mustahab fast at all? No, one actually, uh, initially you have to see how many days you have, you have missed. You know, sometimes it's the, the least or the, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, uh, the least of the days you've, you've missed, for example. Well, you can definitely uh, confirm it's at co least Yeah, calculate, yeah, exactly. It's, for mm -hmm. example, 15 days. Yes. Uh, at least, so you do 15 days of the qadha. And then you have also mustahab as well, so yeah. From YouTube, what is a good dhikr we can do on the tasbih? Salawat. Uh, of course, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. <laughs> this is one of the uh, best dhikr, uh, which uh, also has some riwayah as well. well what about the, the standard Allahu Akbar, Alhamdulillah, Subhanallah? What about tabarra on, on the tasbih? Is that, is that good? Um, of course, tabarra is also mentioned. Um, uh, also, what is mentioned is to say, um, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, Wala ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Allah again. Akbar. Ah, tasbih uh, yes, Tasbihat al-Arba'a. Um, there's a narration with this regard. Um, I can't remember. A great narration. Uh, these are, of course, Tasbihat. I think a very good opportunity for the one to see exactly what is mentioned. I mentioned some of them mm -hmm. for the month of Rajab. La ilaha illallah, for example. Yes. To start to initially find what is mentioned for the amal of Shahr Rajab and try to do them every day from the istighfar to the sabihat La ilaha illallah as I mentioned and you can add yourself you know salawat ala Muhammad ala Muhammad la'an of, of their enemies um, also tasbihat uh, al-arba'a for example um, and ad'iya with this regard as well Thank you Shaykhna we're going to go to a short break join us after the break as we continue our discussion here on Ahkam SOS I have a question regarding keeping pictures Is of scholars at home. Is it permissible to plant trees by or Was over Islam the established graves? based on peace Is and non-violence? Is it permissible to collect donations for charity projects from Is it permitted to consume canned food imported from non-Muslim countries? Is there an issue for men looking at non-Muslim women? To have your questions answered live, call in on plus four four two zero three five one five zero one nine nine, or WhatsApp us on plus four four seven four one five zero nine two one five five. Alternatively, you can also email us on ahkamsos at imamhussain.tv Yes, this is a live show. We do take in all your questions. And you can send your questions on the WhatsApp number there. And you can see there's a QR code right over there which you can scan. And I'll take you to your WhatsApp page. Um, if you're watching on YouTube or you're watching on Facebook Live, please put your questions in the comment section and inshallah the Sheikh and I will be able to discuss and also answer your questions. You can call in if you'd like. 
Live into the studio, 203 If you're not in the UK, just call us on the WhatsApp number. The technical team will put you through to the studio. And inshallah, the Sheikh will be able to answer your queries. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Assalamu alaikum. Sheikh, according to his eminence, the Grand Ayatollah Sheikh Wahid Khursani, hafadullah, is it permissible for a woman to wear a chador or a baya that has um, is ornamented or um, is, is beautiful, has embroidery and, and so forth? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Yeah, the Sheikh mentions that what is uh, considered as ornament or zina uh, for the woman must be covered from the non-mahram. And the Quran says, وَلَا يُبْدِينَ زِينَتَهُنْ Do not reveal your beauty, uh, your zina. So if this child or abaya is attractive, you know, silky, shiny, I don't know, red and uh, yellow and, and so forth, attracts, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, the people, then of course one should cover that with, with let's say, another abaya or another child. Shaykh, in Salah, and as you know, there's a lot of dhikr to remember in Salah, uh, taslim, and sometimes one may recite taslim in the wrong position. It may be in the in the first rakah, maybe in the four third rakah where uh, they're doing of four rakah prayer and so forth. What does one do in that situation? If somebody, let's say, as I've mentioned before, that adds something uh, to the salah, he, he adds or she adds a, a taslim, let's say, in the first rakah, or taslim. Uh, in the second rak'ah, for example. Uh, in this case, one should ignore uh, this taslim and they have to get up for the next rak'ah. When they finish the salah, they have to do two sajda so, so. for making the taslim in the wrong place. Mm -hmm. The taslim should be at the third or the fourth rak'ah, depending yes. on the salah, not mm -hmm. in the second rak'ah, mm -hmm. unless the salat is subh. But for the maghrib, you have to do taslim on the third, not on the second. Mm -hmm. And the likewise of Isha, on the fourth rak'at taslim, not on the second rak'at taslim. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it happens, one should ignore this taslim and get up and continue yeah, the salah continue. and just recite. Yeah, I, th I think to it's sajda. important to mention sajda salah is like if anything is removed from the salah and also anything added. Added, exactly. So technically yes. you've added something, so you have to do the exactly, sajda. Yeah. So to, to um, yes. compensate for that. Um, Sheikhna from, uh, ah, so with salah, mm -hmm. it, is there any salah, uh, be it obligatory or desirable, that one can read and it is only one rakah? Yes, indeed, uh, it's uh, the mustahab salah of namaz al or salat al-layl, in which the last rak'ah would be just one rak'ah, known as salat al-witr, that you just pray one rak'ah, and then you have a prolonged qunut, uh, in which you recite uh, many dhikr in that qunut, and then you end the salah with, with um, uh, ruku' sujood and taslim and mm -hmm. um, tashahud to the end of the salah. Uh, from His Eminence the Grand Ayatollah says, Sistani Sheikh, now my question is, please can I tattoo the name of Imam Hussein on my body? The Sayyid mentions that if it was disgracing the name of the Imam alayhi salam in this way, then it's not permissible. Mm -hmm. But the advice from the Sayyid that uh, it's better not to do such a thing and mm -hmm. to avoid you know, putting the names of Ahlul Bayt on your body, especially when, when he is in a, or she is in a state of uh, Janab, as you know. Um, so one should avoid such act. Uh, and I mean, I don't think the tattoo would be something even uh, desirable for the one to do so, because if you regret, then you mm -hmm. can't remove it, isn't it? In some there cases. There is a laser but, thing you can do, but then uh, it's like, it's why, why it's, do it's better it to avoid place? it. Yeah. yeah, it's better. Just be sure if you want to get one. Um, Sheikh Nak, sticking with his eminence, the Grand Ayatollah says, Sistani, what is his opinion on drawing? The Sayyid again mentions that drawing um, a non sculptured figure is allowed. So, what is allowed is to draw a human being or an animal on a piece of paper, for example, or something like that. So, that is allowed. Yes, uh, you can draw Asa. with that exception. Sheikh Nak. This is a very common question. I think everybody does ask this at time to time. Is smoking haram? Smoking is not haram, as mentioned before. Probably depends uh, what you're smoking as well. Uh, Let's say smoking cigarettes. cigarettes, yeah. We don't <laughs> want to go to something yeah. uh, you know, severe than that. Uh, but just the normal smoking is not haram. But some ulama would go for the hukum, the hukum issue of makruh and dis discouraged mm -hmm. hukum. 
Uh, and of course, uh, it's not haram because there's no evidence which says that this type of minor harm would be haram, as mentioned before, that the severe harm, like taking drugs, for example, uh, you know, that would have the effect, you know, and immediate effect. And of, yeah. of course, that would be uh, the haram types of smoking, mm -hmm. if we can say smoking. So, yes, just normal cigarette smoking would not be haram, but some would say it's makruh and discouraged. Sheikh, more questions coming in from our viewers. Um, Sheikh, you've mentioned, and it's quite well known, common knowledge, that there are three prayers which we recite aloud Fajr. Maghrib and Isha, we recite the, the surahs at the beginning of the first and second of aloud. Is this the same for our sisters or do they recite silently? What if there's men in the room and so forth? They have the option to recite aloud or uh, uh, silence, if, depending on the salah. Mm -hmm. uh, but actually, when it comes to the mahram, they have to lower their voice. And, and, uh, yes. Uh, furthermore, Salaamu Alaikum Shaykhna from WhatsApp. I have seen my photo of people, or I have seen many photos of people doing uh, sujood in front of pictures of Imam Ali alayhi salam. Is this permissible as we are only meant to bow to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Many of the ulama mentioned today that uh, if there's a picture in a room of a human being, for example, uh, then it's discouraged and makruh. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to in somehow cover the, the picture with a curtain, for example, or remove it, for example. Uh, from that room and pray because the, in other words uh, makruh means the reward or the salah reward will be, will be less or could give other meanings so yes one should basically cover it's not wajib but should cover to get you know, the utmost reward of the salah by covering the pictures of the humans and even animals for example uh, in that particular room of, of prayer uh, to avoid this discouragement or the karaha uh, otherwise, it's not haram, but um, because the the individual is, is, is the salah is praying towards Allah Azza so he says Allahu Akbar, and nothing to do with the picture. Mm -hmm. As I've said, it's, it's makruh. One should cover or remove it for the salah time. Sheikh, a very interesting question here. You might need some research actually. Do you pay kafara on marks left on your spouse when being playful or intimate? So, husband and wife. Maybe they're play fighting, tickling. Um, sometimes in the bedroom, they, you know, I mean, they, they uh, you know, could be like uh, biting and things like that. Sometimes it can get a little out of hand, or sometimes it's a bit, ex not want to say extreme, but a bit more uh, aggressive than normal. Um, all uh, with consent and so forth, and in in um, pleasure and so forth like that. But marks are left on the body and so forth. Is there kafana to pay on that? We'll check inshallah this day. Inshallah. That's such a really good question. Uh, from WhatsApp, do you have knowledge about the theory of Imam as Sadiq alayhi salam that the universe is not always in the one and same condition? In other periods it expands, in others it contracts. Imam Sadiq alayhi salam being one of the best, uh, the best, one of the greatest scientists the world has ever seen and uh, introduced many, many, uh, well discussed many, many elements and uh, different topics in, in science uh, which were later on discovered. Um, in, in, in closer times. But Shaykh, in regards to the universe expanding and so forth, do you know anything about it? Have you read anything? The Quran says, وَإِنَّا لَمُوسِعُونَ We are expanding mm -hmm. with regards to this universe. So, uh, initially it's a, it's a Quranic notion. It's mentioned in the Quran mm -hmm. that Allah would expand. وَإِنَّا لَمُوسِعُونَ uh, With regards to Muhammad Sadiq alayhi salam, uh, there's a book called, well, there's an Arabic version, Al-Imam al-Sadiq kama arafahu ulama al-gharb. Imam al-Sadiq as was known by the Western scholars uh -huh. and mentions their these things in that yes, book. Yes. Uh, one should refer back to this book. Uh, from YouTube, Sheikhna. Both my parents are split. My dad wants me to stay with him, and my mom wants me to stay with her. Why? Or who do I follow? If I stay with my dad, my mom won't talk to me. Um, Islamic ruling. I remember. I think is it up to like f three or four years that they may stay with the mother. After that, it's the father's responsibility. The mother has no say, if I remember from my house lessons. I mean, best solution, because these are um, marital and family disputes, is to go yeah. back to uh, Maulana in that center, local center, for example, who is expert in this field, uh -huh. social issues and so forth, to try to reach uh, some kind of... Uh, uh, 
resolution resolution somehow to end this dispute that's, that's the best way I'm sure I've read somewhere Sheikh now I think after, after the, the child is stopped breastfeeding it's the father's responsibility the mother has no say or anything like that I've, I've, I've I think I've read I'll, I'll check myself how about that I'll do some research for a change um, another question Sheikh now from YouTube what are the signs of a righteous spouse Sheikh now let's look at the Ahlul Bayt what have they advised us when looking for a husband or wife? What should we look out for? In overall, the hadith says uh, the one who has akhlaq and deen, he has uh, moral virtues and uh, aqeed and belief, very important uh, basis for choosing the right spouse. Without akhlaq, even if this individual was pious individual in terms of aqeed, he believed in Ahlul Bayt, he attends the mosques, uh, he is very uh, attached to the uh, majalis of Ahlul Bayt, but he has no akhlaq, you know, he's like mm. ill-tempered, he gets angry quickly and so forth. Um, you never know, I mean, he could even reach to the stage of, let's say, uh, physically harming his wife, for example, yes, as a result, or vice versa. So akhlaq and deen, very important mm. basis and pillars for finding the right uh, spouse and, and the right individual. Otherwise, uh, other things can, can be gradually uh, brought to the, to the life of the uh, couple. Mm. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikhna. Is it permissible to highlight on the English translation of the Quran? Sheikhna, a lot of people, when they read books, I do this myself as well, when you're studying especially, you need to highlight certain areas, you need to make notes on the side and so forth. Uh, and it helps you to understand, absorb the information and when you even go back to refer to it, it you don't have to read the whole page, you can just read them a couple of lines and it's marked out, you know, the information that you need and so forth. Is that okay to do with an English Quran? Translation? Yeah, translation. If there's no breach of sanctity to this act, there's no issue with it. Mm -hmm. And Sheikh, now final question from our viewers today is, oh, they're sending me more now, is lottery tickets haram? If the lottery is bought uh, with the intention of, uh, because the, uh, the, there is a national lottery in which uh, most of this money is paid to the charity organizations to build hospitals and so forth, then with this intention and, and to, to pay to the charities, for example, one can actually buy that lottery. Mm -hmm. But if it's to do with gambling force, that's haram. I if it's gambling, it's haram, yeah. From WhatsApp, Sheikhna, and I hope this is the final question for today. Assalamu alaikum. Can a woman in Haid recite more than seven ayahs of the Quran? I think it becomes makruh after seven. Can you please confirm, Sheikhna? You've mentioned it, yeah. Yes. Yeah, you mentioned it. Uh, it depends on um, is it seven ayat. She's asking, I've heard, or he or she, I don't know. I've heard a woman who's uh, on her period and so yes. forth, uh, they cannot read more than seven ayahs of the Quran. Is this true or false? I've read it in the books of the fiqh, but the thing is, is it to do with the mujnib or the muha'id? That's, that's, uh, ah, okay. I'm, I'm not really sure about it. Okay, yes. so uh, yeah, send in your question again, inshallah, with a bit more detail, and the sheikh will be able to answer your question. Sheikh, now that's all we have time for today on Ahkam SOS. Thank you so much for all your Thanks. efforts and, and uh, you know, that, that um, I know it's, it's very, very difficult for you, Sheikh, and uh, you're a very, very busy man and you get bombarded with questions, different topics and different, uh, you know, uh, sciences and so forth. But thank you, Sheikhna. And thank you to all the viewers for joining us on this episode of Ahkam SOS. If we didn't answer your question, we do apologize. And inshallah, we'll roll it over to the next episode, which will be Wednesday, 7 p.m. here on Sky Channel 789 Imam Hussein TV3. In the meantime, enjoy the celebrations and enjoy the blessings of Rajab, inshallah. Uh, go to your local center. Inshallah, there will be events. If not, Sheikhna will be over the next couple of episodes discussing different, different amal and so forth that you can do in this holy month. And please, please remember us in your du'as. Take care. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh.
With more and more victims of war and poverty, the Middle East has seen a surge in patients seeking medical aid. Iraq alone has 2.4 million people without access to any form of medical assistance. In Afghanistan, due to the lack of funding and devastating conflict, the health service is at breaking point. Imam Hussein Charity aims to help provide a better future for these impoverished patients, aiding them with finances for their prescriptions as well as dialysis of their kidneys. You can help our brothers and sisters with purchases of prescriptions for just £20 and for £200 help a patient with a dialysis procedure. To donate or for more information visit www.imamhusseincharity.com was not able to separate Abbas from Hussein just as the Haram of Abbas cannot be separated from the Haram of Hussein in the same way that Safa can never be separated from the mountain of Marwa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the mountain of Safa and Marwa to be from the Sha'air Allah. Similarly Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the Haram of Abbas and the Haram of Hussein to be Sha'air Allah al Kubra. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will that between the Haram of Abbas and the Haram of Hussein, there is a land of Mawadda, there is a land of Azar, there is a land of Ishq, there is a land of Junoon, this is the land of Bain al Haramain. So long as this Haram of Abbas and the Haram of Hussein remains, people until the day of judgment will meet their faces and chests shouting, Ya Abbas and Ya Hussein. The divine decree of Allah is that from the land of Bain al Haramain, every time a tear is shed for Hussein, a tear is shed for Abbas. It is the divine decree that from Bain al Haramain, so long as there is a chant, Ya Hussein, it will be accompanied with the chant Ya Abbas the decree of Allah is that Abbas can never be separated from Hussein Yeah.